After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say, I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna and this is John's Furniture Repair. So it's not a huge desk, but it's pretty big. Um, it's got a lot of surface damage, but nothing really serious. Finish has worn off in the front area here. And there's stuff stuck on the finish, pretty much flaked off in areas. So it needs a complete redo. The drawers have a few nicks in them, some chunks missing here and uh, just general missing finish everywhere it has a speckled finish which we won't be redoing this is the 70s uh specialty with the speckle finish we're going to keep the hardware and the drawers work pretty good it's an office desk so it has um some more mechanical hardware all the drawers are working pretty nice there's a couple of slots missing here not sure if they're going to use it again like that. So it's a little bit of misaligned. It's kind of smacking when it goes in. So we'll take a look at if we can do any alignment with the mechanical hardware. Uh, it sits pretty low to the ground with the base. And these types of bases usually get kicked all day long. So they're a little beat up and needing some work. And we'll check to make sure the feet are still intact. So. It doesn't slide on the ground when we're people move it around. But yeah, I think there's nothing really too serious. We just need to get this old finish off, do some sanding and uh, give it a beautiful new finish. So let's get to work.
All right, so I've got the top all stripped and these little scratches, cross grain scratches that are all over the place on this entire top are part of the factory finish. You can see them everywhere here. So they're not very deep, but they are a little deep and uh, that just means we'll have to be doing a little bit more sanding than I would originally do. And hopefully we can get most of those out. There's a little bit of a water stain here. I'm gonna sand it and see how far we get before I go with the acid route. And uh, maybe we don't have to. And then we've got a bunch of edge damage. I've got some putty sitting in there, some epoxy putty that will shape back to the edge and uh, get that all good. I still have a few more places to pop in. This front edge is really worn. You can see here, there's some veneer that's just worn right off. It's very thin here, so sanding is gonna be interesting. But I'm gonna start with the 120 and uh, see where we get. I could steam a couple things, especially something like this, and that might be a good place to start here. Um, getting some steam going just to puff up the fibers and give me as much to work with as I can. I'm talking myself into it as we go here, but it's a pretty nice top, it's got some nice um, graining, pretty crazy actually. And uh, yeah, so we just gotta get all those marks and dents and scratches and things cleaned up and then strip the rest of this thing. It's a beast. So I've got this thing flipped on its front to do the back and uh, looking at the base, there is all but one little glider, one little half piece of a glider left for the feet on this thing. And this side is not too bad for water damage, but there still is quite a bit of water damage on the particle board panels. Um, but this side, Got it a little worse, pretty gross. And I already vacuumed up the spider eggs, so I saved you guys that terribleness. And it's just been getting dragged on its base and chewed up. And the uh, miters are coming apart here. It is loose coming from the base. Got to get all this metal out of here, put some new feet back on, kind of rebuild things and we're not going to be able to do a whole lot about this whole situation. I'm probably just going to remove the veneer like that. It doesn't need, even need to be there. It's just going to fall off eventually. I'm going to redo some corner blocking in here to make sure it's uh, sturdy. This is just going to get um, cut away up to a, about halfway there and I'm going to put in some new wood because that's probably full of mold. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna clean this up and get some better, like that's probably mold, don't you think? Gross. And then put some feet on this poor thing because if this is gonna sit on the ground, it's gonna soak up moisture from the concrete, from the floor, anything is going right into that particle board right away. So not a good situation. Okay, second maybe not so great thing about this is that these panels are not actually part of the frame. Look at these nails. They're just, and there's gaps. They're just sitting in there. And I went to go look at this one and check this out. It's not even glued in there anymore. <sighs> maybe not the best piece in the world. I mean, we'll make it pretty, but honestly, not built very well. Guess I'll take these panels out. That's the easy way to do it, which it will be. And uh, just strip the frame. Yeah, weird, eh?
so um, yeah, there's like nothing left here to work with, basically. But I'm gonna have to make it work because replacing the sides of this desk is not an option. So my plan, my wonderful plan is to cut these both off with the circular saw, nice and straight. And then I'm going to have to put a whole support board on the inside and then laminate a little piece to make up the stuff that we cut off. And even at that point, I'm gonna have to wood harden all of the stuff because I can't, I'm gonna only be able to go down pretty much as far as this is right now. because I need to leave a little bit of this to attach because it's this attachment for the entire side. So I can't take all of this down. It looks like it stops being really bad just a little ways down here and this side's not as bad so I should find okay wood pretty much down here and then I'm going to do a solid wood piece to support basically everything which is going to be the new supports for everything and I mean it's not great because what that's sitting on is is going to have to hang on still the pressure point will be where this hinges this particle board here. So we'll make it nice and thick and we'll put gliders on and we'll do everything we can to help it out. Um, but I'll probably even put a couple of braces going across so this whole thing kind of stands together and we don't get any of the side to side torsion that could break these points off. Ugh, such a mess. When there's particle board and there's, wo there's water, it just soaks it up like a sponge and there's nothing you can do. So uh, in terms of the trim, a little bit of dry, or dry rot there going on for sure and I'm just going to use my wood hardener again on all of the bottom of this trim and then probably replace uh, pieces of that as well. thought this was going to be an easy one guys. Nope. Okay, I think I have enough clamps on it now. Should be good. <laughs> All right, so we sawed down the sides and then we added the rest back with some plywood and then supported with the inside piece that goes the whole length and then also added center supports with corner blocks. As well, there are brads holding things and a lot of glue. So, although we are still mostly relying only, you know, the whole force of the thing is 
transferred to this piece and the only thing keeping this piece connected to this piece is the glue to a crappy particle board joint. Um, but this seam right here is the most important one to have tight because the board that is connecting this board and giving it all of its lateral strength is only connected with what particle board we had left to attach it here. So making sure that a lot of clamping power is squishing the rest of what we have left here for particle board to this inside support was the most important thing. And you can see I have clamps a little bit lower making sure that part is sandwiched in there because I mean, we're still relying on a really bad material to carry the strength of this whole situation. But I think we've got it transferred pretty well. And once it has gliders on, it won't drag across the floor if people push it. And the lateral strength will definitely be helped by this whole situation. Now, I'm not gonna do anything like that to this side. Um, I did use the wood hardener on the bottoms just to seal in any mold spores and to uh, tighten this up. And we lost all the veneer on the inside of this stuff too. So that's done. And then I also have the wood hardener on the base for the other side. So let that dry overnight. Anyways, a whole uh, process that I was not banking on. I did not turn this thing upside down when I did the estimate, so uh, we have to call a customer on that one. But unfortunately, it's not really any way to uh, make that base tight and secure without all of this because there wasn't anything to work with. So it, it's just a necessary that had to happen. Particle board, eh? All of the joys. Okay, so it's the next day here, and I've got the trim piece with the really rotten corner here that needs some wood replacement. And so I'm gonna just uh, cut this trim back a little ways and add in a new piece of oak here. So just back far enough to where the damage really starts. And then I can uh, recut the miter before I stick it back together, which will make it a lot easier. So I think I'll come back about here. about right to there and this wood is pretty rotten so it's really not that hard to get off you could do this on the saw too just because I'm going right along this line here to bring it right back down Two minutes to get that flat with the chisel so that's good now I'm not gonna do a butt joint here I'm gonna angle this cut so I'm just gonna bring it in at an angle and then I can copy that angle onto my piece there we go looks good Take my piece and copy that angle. There we go. I just cut that on the bandsaw, sanded it a little bit. It's pretty good. Okay, so I'll just glue that on. When the glue's dry, we can recut that miter. Uh, while all the trim is off the base, I'm going to strip it. And uh, the other two joints aren't very loose. They are a little loose and there is a gap there. So I might try to get those big rusted metal tangs out of here so we can bring that together a little better. I'm not gonna put them back in. And that rust is just gonna oxidize in here. So if I can get these apart, yeah, that one's really loose. So and then we can strip them while they're off, which is a lot easier.
from and principally government security agencies. Which I guess the question I have is clearly no warning. It's not just that this is a technology that dictators are Waterloo style scandals in places like Spain. We uncovered a massive. I'm not doing anything wrong. I don't care if the government knows what's in my contacts. Or I need my government to protect me from terrorists. And therefore, these agents. We have got all the clamps off of the base. It is super sturdy, and I'm satisfied with that. Um, this finish on this side here is basically gone, so I'm just gonna sand this side before we, and I also sanded the inside as well before we put this trim back up here, and uh, get these all prepped because it's easier to work without the trim here. So I'm just gonna take uh, my Festool with a 120 paper to get the, um, finish off first and then I'll finish it off with a 180 with the fest tool and then hand sand and then uh, I won't have to worry about sanding up to the edge here when the trim is all back on. All right, so I uh, ended up gluing some loose veneer last night. Um, the edge banding on the front of this piece was all loose. And so I just glued the whole piece down, a little piece on that side, um, as well as because of the water damage, some of the veneers had lifted on this side. So we've got those all glued down. And I'll just get the clamps off of those this morning. As well, we've got all of the trim uh, stripped here and I've got it un under putty. Here's the piece that we uh, spliced in a new piece of oak. And then we've got all of these panels that I pulled off of the back stripped and ready for sanding as well. So I'm gonna get to some sanding this morning so I can get things put back together here. And uh, this side I've just got the feet on and I'm doing two feet per corner to take the pressure off of one point um, and you know just l lessen the, the friction on one one little bumper because it's a big heavy desk so I've got the two sides sanded as well and the front I just have to do a 180 hand sand on those and I'll do that before I put the base back on, just so I don't have to work with that edge up to the trim. So get these clamps off and get to sanding. Alright, so turns out I was off about an eighth of an inch, so I had to take off some meat here and in these guys too. That was hard, so they look a little bit wonky now. I was kicking myself. Just like an eighth of an inch off, but then this whole base would have sticked out and one side be higher. So I took the measurement off the other side because it wasn't wrecked, but I think for some reason this side was a little shorter so whatever got the wood off it's all good to go i just did a little bit of sanding um there's a little bit of a high spot there and as well on the other side it's a little bit thick right there and on the end kind of tapered off a little bit more um the particle board probably is swollen and a little bit wonky so i just don't want that to interfere with my trim so i've got all the trim sanded here 
and we are ready to put the base back on this piece. I've got uh, the side panel sand hand sanded, and yeah, so let's glue this up. All right, so I've got all the panels sanded here and before I put them back on, this is particle board on the edge here. If you can see really closely, um, just fiber board here. And this soaks up anything really, really well. So you don't want a really dark stain to go into this raw. So I'm gonna be using a wood conditioner here and I'm just gonna pre-treat these edges because I don't want my stain fully penetrating into these. and then I'll install them. the whole desk sanded and puttied and repaired. I actually ended up doing a lot of veneer repairs on the top and on the sides where the edge banding was coming off. And uh, we do have a little bit of a stain here, but because we're going with a darker stain, I'm not gonna worry about that. And 
the drawers are ready to go as well. So we're just gonna get on to staining now. And we're gonna be using Gaudi's brown mahogany stain, which is kind of a nice deep color with not a lot of red. So um, I did have to do one more repair right there. So I'll just work around that till it's dry in about an hour and get this thing under color and on the way to the booth. This was supposed to be an easy one, but we're almost there. Okay, it's the next morning and I got two coats on this whole thing last night and I also did the uh, a coat on the inside of the drawers so I'm gonna give it a sand down with 320 and on the profiles I'll use a gray scotch pad and uh, it does need a little bit of color tinting the tops a little uneven this veneer is really crappy and uh, the sides as well just a little bit of evening out and so I'll hit it with a little bit of probably extra dark walnut toner and hopefully that evens it all out and then another couple coats of lacquer and should be good. Okay, there it is all finished up. Got a bit of toner on the top and everywhere else. Just evening out some spots. A little bit of shining on the hardware. It's a very deep, rich color. Looks good though. So if you remember, we rebuilt an entire side of this thing as it was water damaged. 
And uh, I did refinish all the interior of the drawers as well. So those are all nice and clean and smooth. A couple of drawer stops we had to replace, a lot of interior damage. Um, bunch of repair on the veneer on the top and all those little scratches that were part of the old finish we had to sand those all out but anyways i think we ended up with a pretty good finish here and i am pleased so thanks for joining me on this one guys hope you're all enjoying the new year and look forward to doing a lot of videos this year and i hope you can join me so thanks so much again. And if you want to support this channel, if you enjoy the videos, you can buy me a coffee. Their link is in the description below the video. And as always, thank you so much for those of you who do that. And check out our other videos if you like this one. Cheers.